we head into Congress Park and talk a little bit more about those spirits that are still with us today. So, um, before we start, let me ask you, how many of you believe in ghosts? Oh, boy, that's oh, yeah. a, almost everybody. Wow. Because I usually say, well, because a lot of women drag their husbands reluctantly to these doors. And uh, I uh, tell them, well, look, if nothing else, you're going to find out that there's an awful lot of things in Saratoga that cannot be explained. And also, you will find out Street, just a block from here, and uh, let's get started. Hopefully it doesn't. I, I gotta pay attention to my fat fingers. <laughs> Make sure I don't back out. I'm like, I didn't have them, but I, you know, when I was lifting them, well, I didn't have them. I know. Okay. Snoopy. I can't say anything. This stupid mask. I hate the stupid mask. And I wear glasses, so half the time it's like, uh. You got double wearing it. Yeah, pretty much. Then I'm, I find myself taking off the mask, talk to people, and they'll be like backing up and be like, oh, sorry. time had 10,000 hotel rooms. Today we don't even have, well we have about 3,000 hotel rooms. Back in the day Saratoga was really something. This was the premier, um, the premier resort in the United States. This was Las Vegas. We had everything that Las Vegas has including gambling which went on here uh, all since the earliest days of Saratoga. Delphi was the last of the hotels to be built and pretty much the last one standing and it was actually going to be wrecked about uh, about 50 years or so ago and a young couple Greg and Sheila came along and bought it for $82,500 and the reason they were able to get it so inexpensively is that the hotel was totally uninhabitable. It was actually scheduled to be wrecked, but they kept the bar open and they used the proceeds from the bar to slowly fix up the hotel. Sheila used to go out to I can see antique that. shops and garage sales. Remember when I said these are all people getting ready to get drunk? <laughs> Get right the park. antiques that uh, were so common in hotels like that. And if you walked in that hotel about 10 years ago, you were walking into Saratoga of 1890. Oh, wow. Now Sheila got on in years, Greg passed away, and it became a little much for her, so she sold it about uh, seven or eight years ago for $5 million. <laughs> Amen to her. Smart woman. <laughs> So, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> an, this investment group that spent the $5 million, they started working on it and they did not know what they were in for. And five years later and $25 million, this is what they have left. It only has 32 wow. rooms, so that's about a million dollars a room. And you can buy a pretty nice house here in Saratoga for a million dollars. 
actually the only thing left of the original hotel is that face. The mm -hmm. whole rest of the hotel. That's that, 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 that right. It was filming right there. Now, yeah. why? You know, they got involved in uh, working on this hotel. That's pretty cool. It, for them. The, uh, they had to totally, totally replace practically most of the hotel. They dug down deep under the hotel. They found all these secret passageways, great places for spirits to hang out. They also found a tunnel that went from the basement of the Adelphi right under Broadway to the Saratoga National Bank that was here at the time. I don't know which way the money is going, but it's a human thing to have near the hospital. What was happening there, Andra? I don't know what was happening there. They construct the guys that were working on it. They had, as I mentioned, so many problems. They would say that so many things went wrong that maybe spirits did not like being disturbed. You know, we had a woman on the tour one night who used to be a cocktail waitress there, and she said that one night she was getting off her shift and a man came running down. He had been staying on the second floor in the last room over, which, by the way, is the room that John Morrissey died in. You're going to be hearing more about Morrissey, but there's a bar that's named after him. And he came running down and said, there is someone sleeping in the bed next to me. I can look over and see the indentation. Uh, turn the lights on and there's no one here. I want to be out of here. There are so I many stories of things that went on in that hotel <laughs> that, that, the court, the court. Beat, that a lot of people feel that the this whole thing and again. the reason why yeah, me too. is because those spirits did not like being disturbed. Other people will tell you that there were, that uh, it's just, it was just so poorly built. These hotels were all wood and, and you know, a lot of them didn't even have bedrooms or bathrooms or bedrooms or they didn't have heat. And maybe it was just that they did not anticipate the mess that they were going to run into. Well, I don't know the answer to that, but I'm going to let you think about it as we talk about some of the other strange things that have happened in Saratoga. Our next stop is right in here, the arcade building. Mm. Find out who haunts it, what haunts it. That's kind of creepy, I've been there. <laughs> as a kid, in arcade, you know. <laughs> yeah, I've been there as a kid. Told you spirit leads you to things. Uh -huh. I played the game for the kid. It's your to come back. Yeah. They're like, we're going to teach you. They hit everything. Here we go. Thank you. <laughs> Nice and warm. You're a Saratoga. Yeah. 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 All right. No. <laughs> yeah, go to see So we can spread out a little more. Um, welcome to the arcade building. You might be able to figure out why this is called the arcade building. This used to be a very nice shopping arcade with mm -hmm. a very good store, nice stores on, on both That's sides true. there. And it was built by the son of Gideon Putnam. For many of you, you'll recognize that name. Gideon Putnam was the first person to build a hotel here in Saratoga. He built it in 1803. Everybody thought he was crazy to build a hotel here because there was nothing here at the time. The, uh, the, uh, if you look at some of the old pictures of Saratoga, you'll just see his hotel and nothing else. But it turns out it was very successful. It was so successful that he ended up building another hotel right, right alongside of it. He also laid out the streets. He laid out Broadway. He laid, uh, laid out Phyla Street, which we just called Cross, which he named after his daughter. The next street up is Caroline Street, which he named after another one of his daughters. And Washington Street, which comes in from the other side there, he named after his son Washington and not George Washington. 
So uh, it turns out though, while he was building his second hotel, he fell and he hurt himself and he died from his injuries. But while he was laying out the city, he also had the foresight to build the first cemetery. And he's the first person buried in his own cemetery. He's buried in the center, his wife is buried with him. About nine of his children are buried all around them, and about 35 of his grandchildren are buried all around them. It's called the Gideon Putnam Burial Ground. It's right in the back of the Embassy Suites Hotel. If you're lucky someday and you're walking past there, there's a woman who takes care of it. And if you see her, stop and talk to her because she'll tell you lots of great stories. So, uh, so anyway, his uh, son, who by the way is the first Caucasian born in Saratoga, uh, came along and built this building, and it promptly burned down. You know those ten thousand hotel rooms? The fire department was very busy back then. Five thousand of them burned down. The other five thousand had to be taken down. And actually, my grandmother brought me here to watch them take out, take down the Grand Union Hotel in 1953. But uh, anyway, the um, the uh, this building burned down. They rebuilt it, and it burned down again. The second time it burned down, four people died in the fire. Two people died in each other's arms, and their cat died alongside of them. Hmm. People are always more upset about their cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, there was a lady downstairs, uh, right at the bottom of those stairs there, who had a massage therapy practice. And she kept feeling something rubbing against her leg. And she couldn't quite shake it. And uh, finally she had to move. She moved elsewhere in the city. And uh, the problem went away. Uh, then there was a lady who had a massage, uh, excuse me, a, a chiropractor who moved in, Deb Bader, and I was talking to Deb, and she said that, uh, she had to move too, by the way, but for a different reason that some of you might have faced tonight, and that was parking. She couldn't find parking for her clients. But anyway, she, uh, so she, I was talking to her about the cat, and I asked her if she had any experiences, and she said, you know, every once in a while, the door in the office inside would move a little this way and a little that way. And now that you mention it, it must have been that cat. She also said that she, occasionally she would bring her dog here when she wasn't seeing patients, and she said the dog was so antsy and just would be looking all around the office, the office and she said, you must have sensed that cat. Now, another interesting thing about this building is if you look at the people who have businesses here, you'll see float spa, uh, chiropractic, wellness, uh, mm -hmm. joy of yoga, uh, day spa. There are a lot of businesses here in the building involved in what's called alternative health. But that's true all throughout Saratoga. There are many, many people here who sense the energy here and are attracted and they can feel it and they set up businesses like that. Now, uh, to give you an idea, there is a lady who, there's a, there's a shop, uh, Saratoga Olive Oil, have any of you been in there? There's a lady there, Kathleen, who I understand might have left, but uh, Kathleen can read your aura. She can look at you and tell from what surrounds you uh, what is going on inside of you. And uh, uh, she's got this amazing ability. But you know, there's a lot of people like that in Saratoga. Uh, if you go back about a million years or so ago, there was an earthquake here. And that earthquake released energy from the, from the earth. It also created the springs that we have here today that make Saratoga so special. And there are people who can feel that that energy, who, who are so sensitive to it. You know, we have more massage therapists here in Saratoga uh, than, we do, than, uh, than Albany does, and Albany's about 10 times as big, but it's because of that energy. There are people here who say that they can, that, that they can feel that energy. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the energy and the spirits that are here. 
Uh, what we're going to do is go out the front here. We're going to go down to uh, the front of the Arts Center. We'll talk a little bit more about, about the spirits that are here. And then when we get in, we're going to go into Congress Park and talk about the spirits that are still with us today. Moving the curtains. Oh, you're over here listening? They're moving the curtains slightly. Oh, they were? Yeah. But I don't want to um, interrupt. I try to look like get your attention, but you're too focused. <laughs> I was like, screw it. I'll just keep recording it, go back and look at it later. Yeah. But, yeah. Hey. Yes. Whew. I'm warm now. I'm warm. Yeah, so I gotta play the back, look at the curtain. Yeah. Um, cause I can't tell if it's a cat or a kid. Oh. It's faded. Like you know where they push and then release. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a shower curtain. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Or if they'll freak out everybody in the group somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Give us some vibration. You're gonna be everybody's night that they see something. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you're yeah. here. <laughs> now I'm humming like a weirdo and shit. I'm not even, I'm listening and paying attention to a glass of curtains. <laughs> I was wondering, I was like, what the hell is she videotaping? <laughs> the damn curtain that was moving. <laughs> that everybody else seemed to miss. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, dude. <laughs> I want to go see that uh, graveyard. No, I should do the next building. He brings us in and should pull out the thing while he's talking. <laughs> Get it all set up. <laughs> Leave it in one spot. See if they can play with it. If they come play with it, yeah. How many people do you think are going to get scared? I don't know. <laughs> I hope they want it. I hope they would just learn. What you're trying to do is teach. Right? I don't know. What can happen? Uh, Do you want them to bring the yes, energy? yeah. <laughs> Should we warn them? <laughs> no, no. I'm using my voice chakra, and it's hard to use my voice chakra because he's filming. And this used to be the Saratoga, uh, this used to be the library. Add a two. United States, there are more ghost sightings than any place else. It's like New England. Did you say Gettysburg? Wow. Usually people don't get that right. <laughs> Gettysburg is nice. So yes, there's there have been hundreds and hundreds of ghost sightings in Gettysburg. And wherever you have a place where thousands of people have met untimely deaths, you know, the statistic for Gettysburg is that there was almost 10,000 young men who died there. One woman was hit by a stray bullet. But these are young people with everything to live for. They, uh, they, don't, they have wives, they have sweethearts, they are not ready to go. And their energy does not leave. All of their energy is not gone it is some of it is still here with us um, there is a battleground here in saratoga the saratoga battlefield i'm sure some of you have been here been there um, there are so many ghost sightings there that there is a woman 
Brenda Jenks, whose job it is just to investigate the ghost sightings that are over at the battlefield. She is quite a character. She's told me many stories. Oh, she was telling me one not too long ago of a woman that was riding along and she thought she was going to go into a whole group of British soldiers and she ran off the road and, uh, and uh, she had to investigate that. The, uh, now, um, are, are you familiar with what's called an orb? Well, I'm sure you know what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or, yeah, or. Uh, there, this is a picture of an orb. Mm -hmm. It's a little hard to see, but I'll bring it close. This is a picture of an orb that was taken at the Saratoga battlefield. And an orb, for those of you who are not completely familiar with That's it, gorgeous. is a flashback from a camera. Yeah, and it's a flashback of that energy that's still there. And, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, I was, when I was giving the tour not too long ago, uh, uh, somebody asked me, well, how about Ground Zero? You know, there's a lot of people who died at Ground Zero. And I said, you know, there's so much energy in New York City that it's really hard to sense just the tiny amount of energy that's left over in these spirits. And, uh, but, but I had not been to Ground Zero, so I, I really didn't know. And a guy, a guy comes up to me and he says, I'm a cop at Ground Zero, and you would be amazed at what goes on there. So it is apparently everywhere. You know another, uh, are mm -hmm. you familiar with Shanksville, Pennsylvania? Shanksville, Pennsylvania is where Flight 93 crashed uh, on 9-11. Yeah. And there are a lot of ghost sightings there. There is a, a, the first FBI agent to arrive there, a woman, has devoted her life to the spiritual activity around, around uh, Shanksville, Pennsylvania. So that'll give you a little bit better idea of the nature of these spirits. And, and uh, now we're going to start talking about the ones from Saratoga. And to do that, we're going to go into Congress Park and tell you the story of some of these people who are still with us, I think. Oh, that thing? Yeah, go ahead. That used to be the library, Josh, before it was the art center. Huh? That used to be the Saratoga Library before it was the art center. Okay. This is, that's, remember I said I tried to get in the building, I can't get in the building? Yeah. Yeah, it's over there, bro. Here we go. It's nighttime. Um, he's coming towards it. Oh. I don't think we'll be able to... Right there. Actually, it's right across. See that big building right yeah. there? That's the one I tried to get into, and I never can. Oh. Um, no, it's owned by the city. Oh. They won't let anybody near it. Um, it's supposedly it's one of the hottest buildings that we've had here. Oh. In this park, anyway. And the door was open one day. And I didn't go in because the maintenance guy was in there. So anyway, this statue is called the Spirit of Light. It is dedicated to a man named Spencer Trask. Spencer Trask was one of the richest men in the United States. His claim to fame was to be brought general election. And he and his wife came to Saratoga, oh, in the 
mid 1800s and fell in love with the city. They bought uh, an estate, uh, actually, not too far from here, called the Road. Yep. Me. That's the Mariano got its name. Yep. The, uh, <laughs> so there was. Uh, <laughs> so for those of you who don't, uh, <laughs> the, uh, Katrina Trask brought her oldest daughter, Christine, to see where they were building this estate. And it was later on in the day, the sun was going down, there were all these tall pine trees. And she said to her mother, Mommy, look at all the yaddos. Because she was playing with the word shadow. And ever since then, it's been known as yaddo. The uh, uh, Katrina, and uh, she wanted that particular piece of property because there used to be a tavern on the property. She's a very spiritual and uh, very literate person, too. And in that tavern, Edgar Allan Poe wrote the Raven. She would say that when she was walking on a quiet night and the wind was just rustling a little bit, she could hear those words, quote, the Raven nevermore. So, um, a raven is a special bird. the fact that they were so wealthy, they were so beset by tragedy, Katrina got the plague that was going around at the time. It oh. was diphtheria, and she, uh, actually she was expected to die. She was in her room, um, and she was in the, uh, and she was very, very sick. She said, uh, so they brought her children up to kiss her goodbye. Did and uh, she slipped into a coma. She was in that coma for three days. She woke up from the coma and all her three children were dead. Well, dead or dying. And uh, they had all uh, gotten the plague from kissing, to, uh, from kissing Katrina goodbye. So now Kat Katrina and her husband Spencer are living in that big mansion there. Spencer was very upset about what was going on in that building over there that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. And, uh, that one I can't get into, Dash. Uh, well, <laughs> At least see why we're in that line. private train, uh, private railroad car, and go down to, the, to New York City to see the governor, who was there in New York at the time, and, and uh, talk with him. And on his way down, another train smashed into mm -hmm. his car, killing him. And now Katrina wow. is a widow, living there in, in uh, at Yaddo. And uh, fortunately, though, Spencer had a partner named George Peabody. George Peabody took very good care of Katrina, took care of the estate, took care of her money, and fell in love with her. And about a year later, asked her to marry him. That sounds like murder. <laughs> he asked her every year for 10 years to marry him. She said, no. finally in the 10th year, and I told her she was a very spiritual person, she said she saw a bright light appear in her room. The light got brighter and brighter and brighter, and then it went out. And she knew at that point that Spencer's spirit had left this earth. So she agreed to marry died yeah. the, uh, uh, But that's not all the tragedy connected to this statue. The uh, lady who posed for it was a woman named Audrey Munson. Audrey Munson came to the attention of a man named Daniel Chester French, who was uh, a world famous sculptor. He had done the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. And uh, she is uh, a model. Uh, today she is uh, uh, the model for about 25 statues that still exist in New York. And as a matter of fact, at the beginning of uh, uh, movies from Columbia Pictures, there's a woman standing there with a torch in her hand. And that is Audrey Munson. Uh, so anyway, Audrey and her uh, mother are living in a boarding house on the west side of New York. When he killed his 
his life. Oh, so no, that he would marry Audrey Munson. Oh, that sounds familiar. Well, okay. <laughs> Tell you there's a murder or something. <laughs> <laughs> That didn't work out very well for him. He died in the electric chair a year later. But Audrey Munson disappears. No one knows what happened to her for 20 years. 20 years later, they found her in a, uh, what they called at the time, a mental institution in uh, Ogdensburg, New York. Oh, wow. And they so started crazy. visiting her family, started visiting her regularly now. They kept visiting her until she died there at 103. Oh, uh, mommy. But you know, one of the oh, most that's wonderful a long things about live. giving these tours is that so often people come up to me with their stories. They tell me about what... Uh, they, all the experiences that they had. And when I finished telling that story, a woman came up to me, a woman, an older woman, and she said, I knew Audrey Munson. I took care of her. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, enough of these. Enough of these depressing stories. Yeah, Let's go talk about the Native Americans and our magic water. And to do that, we're going to go over Magic water. To it is magic water. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not scrupulous. Sure I told you there was murder involved. Right. I was like, that sounds like a murder. <laughs> now I'm wondering if they're cursed. Huh? I'm wondering if they're cursed. Everything they build. You know what I mean? Yeah. Rich people <laughs> lost pretty much their whole family. Like, I, it's weird. Mm -hmm. Right, it is. Well, I wish I could turn my flashlight on. So I can get to Fucking it. hands are freezing. They are, yeah, yeah. I'm That's starting to get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. I'm not too sh shaky on the video. I don't think so. I hope not. I don't understand why it's so cold out. Yeah. Very ancestors. The Indians would have special water. <laughs> 